This is the first time, literally ever, 11 basalt columns have been set up in one single location. And you don't have 11, you have 22. <laughs> you math pretty good. Yeah, right? You know? <laughs> I math the hell out of that. <laughs> so yeah. part of the motivation for these, these fountainscapes, weren't they originally fountainscapes or something? No, no, it was, the motivation was uh, we had too many basalt columns sitting at the office. Oh! <laughs> Ooh, wait, oh, whoa. Eh? Eh? Oh, my kickers? Wow. Look at that. Yeah. You're so talented. Yeah. Just... MJ. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, Juan, what did you say? What? I can't hear you. Oh, okay, sorry, wrong end. All right, so we are almost there. We've got Matt and Juan just finishing up the last course. It's looking great, fellas. So after this, we're gonna start working on getting those extra aqua blocks in to vault the basalt columns and really start working on banging out this fountainscape. So we've got a bunch of bags of gravel that will end up filling in all this void space along with large and small aqua blocks so that we can create our different tiers so that we are really maximizing the height of those 36 inch tall basalt columns. The boys behind me are just buttoning up all of the loose ends, tying the pumps together. Let's take a walk over there and just check in, get kind of an update from Micho and Matt and Ryan. But we are almost done over here and it's looking great. Oh boy. Okay, all right, I love it. Okay, so we showed you this at the end of yesterday, the manifold, they are installing the two five to nine pumps. It's going to be very tight in there, but I don't think there's gonna be enough room for Ryan and Daniel and the two pumps in those welds. So we'll probably just go with the two pumps in there. Looking great, fellas, looking great. Micho, what do you say? I think it's gonna look awesome once it's running. Excited, huh? It already looks good. I like the accent boulders that we're incorporating in here too. They're really kind of tying in nicely with the basalt. Yeah, they look great. It just breaks it up a little bit. It'd be weird if it was all just gravel. Yeah, just gravel and the basalt rocks. And we needed something too to, to help hold back that gravel, right? Because, all that up. yeah. All right, so we've got a mix of the one to three inch red flint and then the three eighths to three quarter red flint as well. The nice thing about that small gravel is that it almost acts like a sponge in a way, as opposed to the big gravel, which will create a lot of splash. So once we fill this thing up with water, test it out, get all the ball valves, everything dialed in, the flow, all that good stuff, we may have to add some small gravel in some of those splash zones like maybe down at the base of this rock because everything slopes very hard off of the top of that basalt so all that water is going to come that way so we may pull out some of that big gravel and put some small stuff in there just to help reduce the amount of splash that's going to accumulate maybe on the coping stone over here and potentially outside of the wall because we don't want this thing to be running splashing all over the place like crazy and then getting the sidewalk all wet either especially this time of year when things ice up very very quickly with just a slight bit of wind and sub-zero temps. That's where we're at. I love it. It's looking great. Once those guys are done putting those pumps in, we're going to start filling this thing up with water. And then once it's full, we'll test it, iron out all the ball valves, get everything locked in, ready to go. And uh, we're cruising, man. We are cruising right along. And then the last thing to finish everything up over here would just be the coping stones that Daniel and Ryan are going to work on a little bit later. We got it, baby. here at our Fountainscape project, our trio of Fountainscape projects out here at Society of Little Flower in beautiful Darien, Illinois. I just want to acknowledge that the teammates that I have, they're not just pretty faces, they are multi-talented rock stars. Now normally you see us doing 
a lot of foaming and placing rocks and that kind of stuff. Rarely do you see us actually doing some mortar work or fine masonry, but the boys are over here mixing up a nice little mortar slick slurry. And the reason for that is we are setting all of these coping stones in that mortar. Micho, doesn't this make you so happy? Yeah, man, it looks great. You're a liar. I think this is awesome. It's turning out just beautiful. It's just so nice to be able to have teammates that are so multi-talented that they can just be trusted to run with this stuff and do a fantastic job. I had no doubts that they could pull it off. They've already got the first water feature finished up. Looks like they're going to take this mortar and go over and finish up the other side. While they're letting this settle or set, they're gonna go ahead and finish up all the gravel work and ball valves and that kind of stuff, but it's just looking beautiful. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. You can see we've got some coping lights down there that we are going to, nice, nice, you're a hand model. Yes, yes you are. So we've got six coping lights that are gonna run around the outside to illuminate the wall. You can see that they've got that thin set all down underneath there. The reason we had to do that as opposed to glue these bricks is when we were laying the coping stones down, some of the bricks in the wall were uneven, but also some of the bottoms of some of these coping stones were a little uneven as well. So this allows us to get everything nice and level and flush and just have a really nice, clean look. Now that these are all set, they're gonna finish up mortaring up some of the joints, get it all clean, and then, like I said, move over to the other side. But we are going to have this thing rocking and rolling today, and it looks freaking fantastic. Like, so good. Like, so, so good. I cannot wait to fire up this set. We already tested out those on the other side over there, and they look absolutely beautiful. Very high impact from far away, as well as up close. I'm gonna turn the camera off and get back to helping these guys out. Maybe they need me, maybe they don't. They might just want me out of their way. But all I know is that it looks freaking incredible and looks super, super, super good. Final push is happening, the last 10%. It just looks gorgy. This is about the end of this video, folks. But one thing I wanted to share with you is one of the modifications that we made on this project after running it. There was some electrical work that needed to be done out here in order to get power to the two features. Now, there was kind of a miscommunication or a misunderstanding of what needed to happen or what was happening as far as the electrical. It turns out that we only ended up with a 20 amp service provided to both water features. So the challenge that that provided was the pumps that we were intending on using, which were the SLD 5 to 9,000 variable speed pumps, were going to require way, way, way too much amperage for the operate the two features themselves operating off of one breaker. What we had to do is we ended up swapping out all four of those pumps for the Aqua Surge 2,000 to 4,000 variable speed pumps. Jimenez and I are out here this morning kind of buttoning things up. We had to readjust the ball valves, but I wanted to show you real quick while we have everything kind of peeled back, the guts of this system and how it's operating, just kind of to show you how we did it and why we did it. So let me turn the camera around. You can see that we do have this one running. Matt's working over on the other one, getting that thing up and running here shortly. Two pumps located in there, which we swapped out the five to nines and installed the two two to four pumps. There is a inch and a half trunk line running out this way, as well as another one attached to the other pump running out this way. So both of them are on unions, no check valves on this. So when they shut it down, all that water drains out of the pipe in the basalt columns, as well as the one inch feed lines that's feeding each basalt column. The reason we decided to go with these inch and a half ball valves is we've found that when running anything more than three basalt rocks, the bigger ball valves really, really help at maintaining the adequate flow going to each individual feature as opposed to these. These are great and these are super, super helpful because the plumbing is already done for you, um, but these are excellent for those three basalt rocks or your three fountainscape features. To try and use these and plumb to all of these when we didn't necessarily know how many many we were going to do until we got into it was the reason that we opted to forego these and go with the ball valves on the trunk lines. This is a much cleaner look, albeit they do take up more space, but they've proven to be a little bit more trustworthy long-term at maintaining the correct volume throughout. So what we're gonna do now is we will cover up these ball valves with a minimal amount of gravel so that the ball valves are easily accessible. We'll hide the light cable, bury it down in there so you never even know it's there. But I just wanted to 
show that to you guys and girls out there. That is why we went with these trunk lines and those bigger inch and a half ball valves. It turned out really, really cool. I love that it's spitting all over the camera, or maybe that's just splash. So I love the varying heights, the different directions. You can really enjoy this feature from 360 degrees all the way around, and it looks absolutely spectacular as always. Let's go over here and let's go check on Matt and see how he's doing. Looks like he's got everything fired up like I just did, and I believe he's adjusting all the ball valves right now. Yep, you can tell we've got a geyser versus some that have very little flow. So Matt, how you doing over here? You figuring it out? Good, man. And then this is a view of the ball valves that we have set up over here. So he's adjusting those right now to get the adequate amount of flow. Looks like you need a little less on that one, a little more on that one, but I think he believes, I think he believes me. But um, again, same setup over here. You know what, guys and girls out there? I'm gonna turn the camera off for a second and help Matt because I need to be eyes out here. Tell you what, why don't you guys be the eyes? Tell them what you think. Oh, that's right, we're not live. I don't know which one you're going for. Anyways, I am gonna turn the camera off. Eh? What do you think, Halfrich? Nice little surprise visit from you. It's so awesome. I just love that, you know, originally we were talking about actually turning this into like a raised water, like pond. Yeah. Right? And, and the wall was going to be up this high and, and structurally that would have been hard because of the pressure on the brick and everything. And I think because of the architecture of the building and everything else, this just looks so much better. And this is the first time literally ever 11 basalt columns have been set up in one single location. And you don't have 11, you have 22. <laughs> <laughs> you math pretty good. Yeah, right? You know? I, I math the hell out of that. Yeah. <laughs> so part of the motivation for these these fountainscapes were to take what was kind of a, weren't they originally fountainscapes or something? No, no, it was, the motivation was uh, we had too many basalt columns sitting at the office. Oh! No. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a quick way to get rid of a bunch of basalt. Well, we had a fountainscape over there, we did the spears over there, and then this was really a game day decision. So I met with Pastor and then their facilities manager out here, and I said the liability of a pond probably doesn't doesn't make sense. The maintenance of a pond doesn't make sense. 11 basalt columns is going to give you a much bigger impact than the pond ever would. And I love it. I also, I think one of the neatest things is the way you guys set this up and the way it was designed would be winter running. So I'm really excited to bring everybody back here in the winter when we get some of those, you know, below freezing days. Mm -hmm. Come out here and see what this ice sculpture looks like. But I love it. And at night, it's going to look great. Did you put core lights in all of them? We didn't do any of the core lights, right. but we did one watt spots. We did a bunch of them. There's like, I think 11 or 12 on each wow. one. So that's going to look amazing. Yeah. Up at night. I'm excited. And then, and then there's lights underneath these caps all yep. around. Yep. Yeah, it looks really good. You guys did a great job with all the, the circle. And so that liner actually comes up yep. in here, right? Correct. Ooh, wait. Oh, whoa. Whoa. Eh? eh? Oh, my kickers? Yeah. Wait, get a close up. <laughs> wow. Look at that. Yeah. You're so talented. Yeah. Just... MJ. <laughs> <laughs> so listen, we gave you a step-by-step -step kind of view of how we constructed all this stuff. We walked you through the plumbing and how that all got put together. You got to see all three of the beautiful features all finished and wrapped up. And you also got to see Brian's pretty face at the end of the video. So that was a pleasant surprise. So with that said, we're going to go ahead and get out of here and cut it there. And <laughs> so, with that, so we're going to get out of here. Don't forget, Team Aquascape, Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday, 9 a.m. Central Standard Time. Pa-pow! Bye.